My name is Rika. I usually work as a writer and director, uh, and on this project, I'm the director. I recently went on a work trip to LA, and I met some people that work with virtual production. That gave me an idea because I'm working on a project where it might be a good solution for some of the shots that we have in mind. So I figured it would be interesting to come here and see how you do it and how it works. My name is Daniel Stilling. I'm a cinematographer slash director of photography. And I came to the, the VizArts workshop to learn uh, about virtual production and camera tracking and, and Unreal Engine and all that those things together, how they work uh, to help on a film set. Get back up. Hey! Yeah, my name is uh, Oliver Jacoby. I'm a writer, director, and I've done uh, quite a bit of uh, VFX, which was uh, mostly self-taught, um, mainly, mainly in, in terms of compositing. So the idea of doing basically in-camera VFX was incredibly exciting. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the back of the yeah. Sure. So my name is Shabazz Sawar. I'm an actor primarily, but I'm also a writer and a director. I've um, found myself in this workshop because I was interested in the new possibilities that we have with virtual production. I think a lot of people have the staple hallmark right now of The Mandalorian and what's happening in the United States with uh, virtual productions over there. Yeah, flat. Flat yeah. Yeah, let's do that. My name is uh, Marcelo Flores Rioja. I wanted to, to come uh, to this experience because I wanted to know who else is interested in the production, uh, virtual production environments. So I wanted to meet people from the industry, basically. It's interesting to see with this amount of equipment or on this level, uh, how much you actually can achieve. Slate three, take two. Set. Action. Noob. Are you able to attack? Like, um, I would say an analogy that uh, early stages of filmmaking, when, when you were faking stages with uh, miniatures and uh, false perspectives and this kind of work that I really liked a lot. We are in the same uh, position at the moment, but with digital instruments. So basically, I would say that this is the exploring fun part of it. You have to deconstruct the scene a little bit in your head and uh, move the world around your camera instead of moving your camera around the world. You basically have the set ready to go and you have the background change in accordance to what shots you want. I think that the thing you have to pay extra attention when you're doing virtual production is to make sure that it looks real. Because you are in a virtual world, uh, you, you need to make sure that your foreground matches your background lighting-wise and all that stuff. Uh, in this particular case, we would have to move the physical lights as well, which you would do in a very small extent. I think on the big scale, being able to have the Unreal Engine light the entire scene more or less for you, that's a game changer. The whole aspect of having visual effects artists be a much more integral part of the beginning phase instead of that whole we'll fix it in post mentality will slowly, hopefully, and surely fade away into we'll fix it in pre. No, dude. Just like in the beginning of digital when we got the DIT and we didn't quite know what to do with them. And now we know that we can work together, create LUTs on set and that, all that kind of stuff is great. And it's the same with an uh, Unreal operator. Uh, he can create all the reality, although you do all that stuff in pre-production, on the day he can help solve problems and, and get things done. 
I mean, there were, there were more departments basically than in, in traditional filmmaking. I mean, I was, uh, I was aiding on this project as well. And all of a sudden I have this person who's just in charge of the Unreal Engine, which is basically having a extra production designer and the gaffer and basically VFX supervisor all in one person, which, which I also need to uh, cooperate with and make sure he's cooperating with, you know, the DP and uh, all the technical uh, and the director, of course. Well, so I think the big challenge here is that you have a bunch of tech people and you have a bunch of film people and you need to merge the two worlds and you need to learn to communicate together. So there's no signal flying, when we see action, so I Yeah, so I start with the We've shot these couple of scenes here where we don't have to fly to New York and we don't have to worry about, you know, carbon emissions and, uh, you know, getting the license. Um, to shoot in different places and you know there's a lot of financial benefits to be had because you're basically just in one place. Best thing that could happen for for the new filmmakers um, even if you know advanced people that with knowledge and experience in the industry to try out in the way of learning these uh, bridges that connects the two worlds and, and basically to discover their own workflows. Like this is why this workshop is so good is because we need to exchange the knowledge between the tech people and the film people. And the track of Ali Ford and Eric Wixie. My bad. I think the awareness of that this process makes it a bit more taxing for the actors as well because they're constantly on stage, or, or at least much more when the transition from one take to another one is pretty much seamless. So that's something that one should be mindful of as, an, as a performer themselves, or also people who are working behind the camera to make sure that we're not overstressing the talent. Because at the end, all of this technical marvel is to make sure that the performances caught on camera are you know, legitimate. I think there's still some limitations just in terms of the size of the screen and the fact that it's not a real LED screen. You're probably going to have like a whole room where everything is going to be an LED all the way around. And I think that is where we're moving, right? Because if you have a big, if you have that whole canvas around, you can also move around then with the actors and you can uh, build bigger set pieces and that will actually set you more free. It just makes, you know, Budgets coming down, budgets coming down means more filmmaking for the buck. This workshop uh, has shown me that, that, that virtual production is, is a tool, a feather in your cap that you can use for certain things. And it's important to know that, when to call in on that. After doing this workshop, I'm curious to, to try everything related to, to virtual production. It's a great world to jump in and, and become an expert, a world I feel like I'm Wizards have helped me get well equipped to tackle that. Uh, so yeah, anything coming my way, I'm there. Ladies and gentlemen, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's a wrap. Oh.